Hello, hello, and thank you for joining me for the Lending Lounge. I'm Candace Marie Mitchum with Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, Silverhawk Realty, East Idaho. And today we have Mike Morrison, Money Mondays, with Movement Mortgage. And we are going to talk to you about what the national average is for mortgage interest rates today. Guess what? They're coming down. This is a good thing. We're also going to talk about the loan limits for a conventional loan, which have recently increased or are about to increase, but there's a little caveat to that. And also, how do these things affect the competitive market? Stay tuned. <laughs> All right, Mike, thank you as always for joining me and gifting our viewers with a bit of your time and lots of your knowledge. So tell me, tell me what's going on with interest rates today. Ah, well, we're so excited to report that interest rates have actually started to come down and they have come down pretty strongly. We're on a run now of about four, five, maybe six weeks of declines. You know, we hit a peak in October that where the national average was over 8%. And we're now down to what it what virtually amounts to about 7% on an average basis. That means that there are a lot of loans right now going back out with sixes in the front, sixes as the first digit. So this is terrific news. Uh, buyers need to know that this is happening. Uh, this is obviously helping with affordability. It's helping, it's helping with the monthly payments. It's helping people qualify for a higher amount. So this is just, uh, honestly, we're so excited about this. This is, this is the best month of the year, uh, you know, that we've had here in probably, probably two years. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's really a gift to our home buyers, right? And tis the season. So let's keep gifting, right? Yeah. Um, now with that, we're going to kind of save the competitiveness for just a second, because I think all of it kind of plays in. So with the conventional loans, also known as a conforming loan, we just got the news that those limits are going to be increasing, which is allowing our home buyers to afford more house. So mm -hmm. tell our viewers a little bit more about that, if you yeah, so that always gets announced right at the end of November, beginning of December. So we got that number last week. The new number is $766,550. Uh, and so if we're below that on a conventional loan, that means that we are in a, what we would call a regular conforming loan. Mm -hmm. If your loan amount, not your purchase price, but your loan amount is above that, that means we're in what's called a jumbo loan. That's just a different category. Tends to be a little bit stricter in underwriting, and it can be in certain cases, it can be higher or lower on rates. It kind of depends, but but that's an important number if you want kind of the path of least resistance into mm -hmm. uh, buying your house right now. Right, right. So now that those numbers have been increased or those limits have been increased, I should say, um, when does that take effect? And what if we have somebody who's interested in it? They find the perfect property right now and now they can qualify for that amount. How does that affect them between now and when that takes effect? That's a cool thing. So even though the official start date is January 1st, uh, we can do that immediately. We can get under contract, we can buy, we can close now, even, even in the month of December before 2024 starts. And uh, we get to use that new loan amount limit. So that is great news. There's With conventional, there's no delay on it. Perfect. Now, as part of that, we also get the FHA loan limits. And mm -hmm. um, that's a very common first-time buyer loan. A lot of people use FHA as well. That's a much lower number. In, uh, in most of the counties in Eastern Idaho, we're going to be at a loan amount of $498,257. Very precise. Okay. FHA is right, very right. specific. Uh, so 498 and change. Uh, that one does need to close. And actually, there's a few steps we have to take after January 1st. So in that January one does get delayed a little bit. Yeah. But I mean, you could still go house shopping now because I mean, it's typically yeah. going to take you 30 plus days to close Absolutely. anyway. So that's still great news. And one of the other thing that's great too, is at least here, as you know, real estate is hyper local. So mm -hmm. in Idaho Falls, where I primarily service in the surrounding area, depending on when you look um, during the year, our average home price for a single family home will range between 400 and 420. So mm -hmm. you still are well above that yeah. amount for FHA, which is great news for our first time home buyers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, terrific news. And, you know, one of the things too, I wanted to mention about the rate decreases mm -hmm. is, you know, we've had rates going down since roughly the last week of October, first week of November. And it coincides with the data that tells us that mortgage application activity has risen each of the last four weeks. We'll get the new uh, data for that uh, for last week, this week here soon. 
And it's just another example to the buyers that like when rates start going down, it really does increase the activity. It increases yep. the competition. Yep. It increases multiple offers. Right. And thus you're going to pay a little bit more for the houses. And so if you were somebody that's been on the fence, maybe 8% was a little too high for you, but maybe seven and a half works, maybe seven and a quarter, maybe six, nine, nine. Uh, what I encourage you to do is don't wait any longer. Right. Get out right. there. There's a fine line between having a great rate and negotiating power yeah. versus having a better rate, but losing some of that negotiating power and you lose seller credits, you lose concessions, you lose uh, a lot of other things that a buyer can get right now from a seller. So if you're feeling ready and you're feeling comfortable with where things are right now, jump in. If rates continue to go down, we will simply help you refinance later. Right. If rates happen to go the other direction, let's say you buy now and they go up, you'll actually probably look back and feel like, hey, I made a smart decision right. at the right time. So, right. Uh, so you know, reach out to us with any questions on rates. There's a lot of strategy behind this, but I just want to encourage people not to wait too long because we are already seeing some of that increased activity that we that we fear as the rates go down. Exactly. And that's a perfect segue talking about the competitive nature of what's going on. So, I mean, you were doing such a great pitch there. I'm like, uh oh, don't start selling real estate. You're, you know, I'm going to have to compete with you too. Let's stay partners here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But no, I mean, that's 100% true, everything that you just said. And I echo that quite frequently to my clients is we do have a lot of people that are sitting on the fence. I'm waiting for the market to crash. It's not going to crash. It's not 2008. Side note, that was a, a banking issue. Mm -hmm. That's what happened there. That is not the situation that we're in right now. Mm -hmm. um, and now that the rates are coming down, exactly to your point, we do have people that are dipping their toes in the water. So mm -hmm. when you could go out right now, and let's actually take a step back, you know, 18 months ago, 12 months ago, you had to make a decision in less than an hour if you were putting yeah. an offer in on a house. Yeah. You know, um, it, you kind of forgot, did that house have the mudroom that I said I needed to have, right? Those are <laughs> things that really, really happen. Yeah. So now you're back in what we would call a normalized market where you mm -hmm. can actually get a good night's sleep. Think mm -hmm. about the decision that you want to make, mm -hmm. right? So that's great right now. But as that interest picks up or the interest in the market, not the interest rate, you yeah. are going to have more people looking at that same home that might be the right fit for you. So yeah. if you're in a financial situation and the details from your lender make sense for you mm -hmm. and you found that home, take the leap, get in that house and exactly right. If that rate comes down, talk to your lender and refi that house, right? That way mm -hmm. you're not competing with five of your neighbors to get that yeah. same house that you really wanted. And ultimately you're paying more in the long run, right? Yeah. In uh, 2020 and 2021, when we had 2.75, three, three and a quarter of those great rates, I can't tell you how many buyers got extremely frustrated with the yeah. process because they were making offers and they wouldn't get any of the homes. They would do 10, 12, 15 offers. They eventually gave up. Can you imagine like how fortunate somebody would feel today to get a 2.75 rate? And yet those uh -huh. buyers were giving up. So that's, now I'm not saying it's going to get back to that, right? That was a very unique situation. But we don't want to pay 5000 more for the house, 10000 15000 more for the house. And that's what happens when you have four or five people because you got to be the top bidder on that house. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, one of the other things, too, we can probably touch on a little bit is, you know, one, refi. Let's answer some of those questions for folks. And let's briefly touch on um, doing a buy down, too, because if somebody mm -hmm. does get in and they're at a 6.5 and they're like, shoot, I really missed the boat. I would have been super happy with a 5.5, right? There are things that you can do if you're in a financial situation to do so to buy that rate down. So mm -hmm. why don't we touch on that first and then we'll kind of backtrack a little bit. Yeah. So there are tons of buy down options. There's permanent buy downs, uh, which means that, you know, you're going to get that for the life of the loan. That's fantastic. Uh, that's something that we've always done. And we do quite frequently on almost all loans. There's usually some measure of a permanent buy down involved. Uh, and then there are temporary buy downs, which have been really, really popular in the last, I would say, 18 months. Uh, you know, there are feasible scenarios where the, the rate for your first year on the loan could be in the threes right now. Right. And then it kind of gradually goes up as the temporary buy down kind of uh, kind of expires over time. But they can get your payments very, very low. And we are expecting interest rates to go down. So that temporary buy down program pairs up very well with a refinance situation where you're just going to refinance possibly even before your temporary buy down expires. Right. You might even beat the end of that one, two or three year period. So uh, so just know there are options. Uh, talk to a lender. Talk to us. Let us guide you and uh, give you your choices and solutions so you can make the best decision for you and your family right now.
Yeah. And those are really helpful for folks that are, um, a lot of times I see with first time home buyers, because, you know, you might have your income at a certain level yet you're going to have, you know, cost of living increases with your pay. You're going to get promotions, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So as that rate goes up, hopefully, um, to your point, you can either refi or your income has increased. So you have more flexibility. Mm -hmm. And so you have less of a pinch point on that going forward. Absolutely. All right. And so with that, let's talk about refi a little bit, because I know we get questions from folks of, yeah, that's great. I can refi, but I can't refi. I heard from my cousin's, you know, uh, gym teacher's friend that mm -hmm. I can't refi for a really long time. So I'm going to be stuck with this interest rate. So why don't we demystify that a little bit? Yeah. And why don't you let folks know how does that work when you want to refi? Are there time limits? Are there rules? Are there restrictions? Generally speaking. So the reality is you can, for most loans, and I, when I say most, I mean 99% of the loans out there, you can refinance as soon as you want to, uh, right? So, and that basically means as soon as it's financially beneficial for you. There are costs associated with refinancing. They typically get rolled into your new loan. So it's a little bit different than when you're buying the house when somebody has to pay it out of pocket. But those costs get rolled in as soon as the amount that your rate goes down and the amount that your payment goes down offsets the costs that you're going to incur by the refinance, that's it. That's the time you refinance. So, I mean, if rates went down enough, that could be three months from now. It could be mm -hmm. six months from now. It could be a year or two. What I would tell most people to expect is they probably won't refinance for probably a year or more, most likely. Uh, rates don't typically go down that fast that it would be that beneficial. But if it happened, great, right? Well, then we'll right. help you take advantage of it. And 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 speaking for myself and my team and my company, we'll actually help the person monitor that rate situation, and we'll alert them when it's when it might be the right time to examine that and to, and look at the finances. Yeah, yeah, and you know, and that's something that is really great about your team. Um, it's something that I watch as well. Is what rate did we close at? And mm -hmm. then when I have great lenders like yourself, we have that conversation. And say, hey, let's look at our client base, and does it make sense where we can come in, help save the day a little bit, and save them some money so they're going on vacation yeah. that summer, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, as always. Appreciate your time today. And before we um, jump off here, let's talk about where you are licensed to go ahead and assist and where your company, Movement Mortgage, is licensed to assist. Yes. Yeah, so I am personally licensed in the great states of Idaho, Washington, Oregon, and California. And then my company is in all 50 states. So somebody who might be watching this and they're in you know, some other state, uh, reach out to me and we can connect you with the right people to help you. Awesome. Yeah. And for any of your viewers that are watching that may not be familiar with myself, I'm licensed in the state of Idaho. I do primarily service the southeast part of Idaho, um, Idaho Falls. But um, if you're looking for an agent, you're not in this area, please do call me just like Mike. What we're going to do is we're going to know you best. We're going to help you find a professional that is going to, you know, really fit with you and help mm -hmm. you vet that person as well. So either one of us can come together and help you find those professional resources. All right, Mike, thank you so much. I'm looking forward to chatting with you next Monday. Have a great week.